What is computational engineering? How safe is getting a BS in computational engineering? Is a degree in computational engineering worth it? What are the job prospects for computational engineering? These are all really great questions that I've recently seen floating around on the internet and that some of you have been asking me about. So in this video, I'll be answering all of them so you can decide if computational engineering, which is a fairly new discipline, is something you're interested in and will like to pursue. I'll be walking through all the classes you'll take as a computational engineering major, the job outlook, and the type of jobs you can expect to get after graduation, and the salary and prestige of computational engineers. If that sounds good, please be sure to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Let's start off with a preliminary evaluation to see if computational engineering is your cup of tea. Do you enjoy math like linear algebra, calculus, differential equations, and statistics, and applying them in your physics and engineering classes to solve problems? If your answer is yes, there's a good chance that computational engineering is right for you. But obviously there are other factors to consider, which we will be covering shortly. Now, in order to determine if computational engineering is a right fit for you, we must first know what computational engineering is in the first place. So what in the world is computational engineering? In a nutshell, it's a discipline of applying models, simulation, and algorithms to describe the behavior of complex real-world phenomena and solve physical problems using computers in virtually every industry, including but not limited to aerospace, automotive, medical, finance, energy, transportation, and manufacturing. Two traditional ways of solving problems that you might be more familiar with are theory and experimentation. A way to think of computational engineering is it's an additional method of solving problems faster, cheaper, and possibly more accurately that otherwise would be too expensive, too time consuming, or nearly impossible to solve without computers. Computational engineering requires a strong foundational knowledge in math such as numerical and applied linear algebra, statistics, calculus, and differential equations, and a solid understanding of physics to model things like a vehicle crash, protein folding, a supply chain network, the spread of COVID-19, financial systems like investments and options, and combustion or flow in a jet engine using expensive software and powerful computers containing multiple processors. Remember that computational engineering is a relatively new discipline, so only several schools like University of Texas, Austin, offer undergraduate degrees for it, and more schools like Harvard, MIT, Rice, and Purdue offer a master's or doctoral degree. Also keep in mind that the courses I'm about to present are what you should expect to find in an undergraduate computational engineering curriculum and that the curriculum will vary slightly from school to school. Now let's dive deeper into the curriculum of computational engineering majors. Some of the math courses you will take include Calculus 1 and 2, covering differentiation and integration, multivariate calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, and probability. We then have the physics courses, which includes Physics 1 or Mechanics, and Physics 2 or Electricity and Magnetism, as well as General Chemistry. Engineering Mechanics courses will include Statics, dynamics and mechanics of solids where you learn all about force analysis, energy and momentum, stress and strain, bending moments, and vibrations. Some mechanical and electrical engineering related courses you will take include engineering design graphics that talks all about reverse engineering, computer aided design, rapid prototyping, and manufacturing. Applied thermodynamics will cover the three laws of thermodynamics, thermodynamic cycles, and heat transfer. You'll also take fluid mechanics that teaches how static and dynamic fluids behave and the aerodynamics of airfoils and wings. Linear systems analysis will focus on the fundamentals of signals and systems, mathematical modeling of mechanical systems, as well as feedback control systems. Electromechanical systems is another class you'll take that introduces things like basic electronic circuits, operational amplifiers, sensors to measure temperature, displacement, strain, force, and acceleration, impulse and shake testing, as well as data acquisition principles. Now the core computation Computational engineering courses include Intro to Computer Programming that teaches you how to write programs in MATLAB and C++ to solve mathematical and engineering problems. 
Engineering computation class will explore numerical methods and software tools used in engineering computation. Some concepts you will learn include linear systems of equations, nonlinear equations, least squares approximations, interpolation, and how to numerically solve differential equations. Next, we have computational methods for structural analysis, which is just another fancy name for finite element analysis or FEA that will teach you how to set up a problem using simulation software like ANSYS or Abacus such as creating a mesh using axial bar beam and frame elements for structural analysis and choosing the right boundary conditions another class you will take is scientific computation that is essentially just an advanced programming class teaching how to develop algorithms and scientific computing software using languages such as C C++ and Python software engineering and design class covers methods and tools for planning designing implementing validating and maintaining large software systems next is intro to computational fluid dynamics that teaches you how to solve fluid problems containing subsonic, transonic, and supersonic flows using simulation software like ANSYS, Autodesk, and Altair. Lastly is Senior Design Project, where you work in teams to solve a problem in computational engineering using computational methods for analysis and experimental data for validation. Now that we have a better sense of the curriculum, let's take a look at some potential job positions the salary and the future job outlook of computational engineers. As a computational engineer, you'll be able to work in a variety of industries. For example, you could work in the automotive industry as an interior comfort thermo CAE or CFD engineer using various 1D and 3D solvers such as MATLAB Simulink, CFD solvers like Fluent or ANSYS, and meshing software like Hyperworks or ANSA to develop simulation models for evaluating the exterior and interior vehicle design such as the HVAC system that would yield maximum cabin comfort and optimal thermal management. You could also work in the oil and gas industry as a hydrogen computational engineer to develop mathematical and physics-based models and use numerical methods to validate and simulate hydrogen mobility systems such as hydrogen charging systems and various applications. If you wanted to work in the medical industry, you could also develop and optimize algorithms that directly affect the imaging performance of genetic assay instruments used to analyze samples of cancer tumors and determine how active certain genes are. One thing that you should keep in mind when you're job searching is that not every company uses the title computational engineer. Some companies might call their computational engineers modeling or simulation engineers. We see that the median salary of computational engineers is $107,607 per year, which is higher than the overall median salary of engineers, which is $90,744. The pay is also better than both the pay of mechanical and electrical engineering, which makes sense because many computational engineering jobs require a master's or PhD degree and a solid understanding of coding and software engineering. Since computational engineering is somewhat of a niche major in the world that we live in is so heavily dependent on computers to solve our toughest problems using numerical methods, I think the job outlook for computational engineers is very bright and the number of jobs will continue to rapidly increase for the foreseeable future across numerous industries. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. So looking at the top 100 Fortune 500 companies, here are the ones that offer computational engineering jobs in decreasing order of total revenue. Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, Alphabet, ExxonMobil, AT&T, Microsoft, Ford, GM, Chevron, Marathon, Meta Platforms, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, IBM, Procter and Gamble, PepsiCo, Philips 66, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Merck, AbbVie, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, Dow, General Dynamics, Nike, Northrop Grumman, USAA, Dare, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. All right, summarizing everything we talked about. The curriculum of computational engineering includes a lot of physics and math-based courses, as well as classes focusing on advanced programming and computational methods that are needed to model and produce 
predict real world phenomena across multiple industries using computers. Moving on to salary, computational engineers on average make more than other types of engineers. The median salary of computational engineers is $107,607 compared to $90,744, which is the overall median salary of engineers. Many computational engineering jobs also require a master degree or higher. The job market and outlook of computational engineers are very promising and the number of jobs is expected to grow exponentially in the next decade. You can also expect to work at many big name companies like Amazon, Google, and Tesla as a computational engineer. Overall, I think this is a great discipline for anyone who's fascinated with physical phenomena and wishes to solve complex real world problems with a combination of math, physics, engineering, and programming. All right, as always, if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.